How did we honor the legacy of Wilbur and Orville Wright? The impact of the Wright brothers is immeasurable. I'm here in the Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park in the Wright Brothers Bicycle Shop. And there is no better symbol to the Wright Brothers' humbleness and curiosity. Their father, Milton Wright, loved to inspire his children's curiosity. He returned from one of his trips with a toy helicopter for the youngest brothers. Wilbur and Orville immediately began playing with it. And after some time it broke, but instead of being disappointed, the brothers just built their own. In 1892, the brothers joined the bicycle craze and opened their own shop here in Dayton. They used this business to fund their interest in flight. From 1900 to 1903, the brothers began their own experiments with gliders. For years, they would travel to Kill Devil Hills in North Carolina, searching for the perfect conditions to test their gliders. Soon, the brothers started experimenting with adapting engines that might work with their gliders. Test flight after test flight, their experiments failed. Then, on December 17, 1903, history was made. The first powered flight occurred at 10.35 a.m. on the cold beaches of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, with Orville Wright piloting the original Wright Flyer. Their four flights that day changed the world forever. So what does their story have to do with our theater? Well, Caesar Pelle, the world-renowned architect hired to design the Benjamin and Marion Schuster Performing Arts Center, wanted to honor the Wright brothers' legacy in his design. Here are some of the ways he did just that. Inside the Schuster Center's Mead Theater, there are several tributes to the Wright brothers. Wanting to make sure audiences felt close to the action on stage no matter which seat they were in, Mr. Pelle designed the rise of the balconies to make sure no seat was more than 120 feet from the proscenium arch. On December 17, 1903, Orville flew the Wright Flyer on its very first flight, 120 feet. If you look up, you'll see what we call the dome. These four concentric chandeliers are stacked and tipped toward the stage. It just so happens that the center ring is 40 feet wide and matches the exact wingspan of the original Wright Flyer. Oh, but there's more. The distance from the lowest ring to the orchestra level is 90 feet. And it just so happens that Orville confirmed that their first powered flight would need an engine and propeller combination that created 90 pounds of thrust, just enough for the plane to rise, fly, and land on its own power. But the most visible tribute is the star field. Located at the center of the dome, the star field is lit with 2,000 fiber optic lights that replicate the night sky on the eve of Wilbur and Orville's first powered flight. Just a few years ago, we did some serious upgrades to the lighting. Thanks to our friends at Scenic Solutions and their amazing crew, we replaced the old lighting with nearly 5,000 feet of warm white LED rope light. Check out what it can do now. What a fitting tribute to the legacy of the Wright brothers here in the beautiful Schuster Center. So the next time you're here in the Mead Theater and you gaze up at the star field and see those twinkling lights, know that they're a tribute to the Wright brothers' legacy and connect our past to our present. Well, I hope to see you here at the theater soon. How many of you like to play, like to experiment? I do. Well, and you can imagine that in children, play is a natural way that curiosity is sparked. Educators all over the world tap into that desire to play, stoking the development of critical thinking skills, problem solving, and even social skills. Well, there's no better example of enduring curiosity being nurtured by play than with the Wright brothers. Remember earlier when I mentioned that the brothers were given a toy helicopter by their father? Well, that toy was designed by French aeronautical experimenter Alphonse Pinot. Well, the toy didn't simply fall to the ground as the brothers expected. It actually fluttered up to the ceiling where it flew a little bit and then it fell to the ground. 
And although the toy eventually broke, the brothers never forgot it. In fact, in later years, Orville credited that toy as being the thing that sparked their curiosity in flight. Well, I have a replica of a similar toy, and I want to see how it's going to fly here in our theater. Do you want to see? Oh, that was fun. So go out there and play, no matter how old you are, because you never know what's going to spark your curiosity. Well, thanks for joining me for this episode of Behind the Scenes at Dayton Live. I'll see you next time.